And hello everybody, Flights and Gear is back with another product review. And today I have one of the latest flashlights from the folks at Fitorch, or Fitorch, F-I-T-O-R-C-H. Uh, this is the first flashlight of this company that I am reviewing. They have several models available right now, and as of the recording of this video, I actually have a couple, of, uh, a couple other of their lights, two more of their lights, on the way. So I will have further reviews uh, not, too, not too long down the road here. This happens to be the M30R, which I believe is their latest release. And as you can see on the box, it has a maximum illumination of 1800. Over here you'll see that it's 328 meters as far as the beam distance. It's also USB rechargeable. It can be used as a power bank and maximum run time on low is 146 hours. Turn the box over here on the side and you get other bits of information. Uh, there's your beam distance, your candle power. It's also uh, impact resistant to 2 meters and it's IPX8 waterproof which would usually be about 2 meters underwater for 30 minutes. And on the back, a little bit of information there as well. A couple of the features are noted, as well as the outputs of the light. And uh, we'll get to all that in a moment here as we open up the box, because first things that you, one of the first things you'll notice is that it has a very impressive array of accessories. Perhaps uh, the largest uh, selection of accessories that I've seen to date in any one particular flashlight. I know I've been impressed by a couple in the past as far as what they offer in addition to the light, but in this case they've gone uh, a little bit above and beyond, I think. So here's the flashlight, as you can see. Actually, I well, I'll hold off taking that out here for a moment. The flashlight is just about six inches long, actually about 6.2, and at the head here, it's about uh, an inch and a quarter, so or 1.4 inches. So I mean, it's it's not a it's not a terribly small light, but um, I guess you would call it reasonably compact in that it does have a pocket clip, so it will attach to a pocket, or um, you know. Um, a pack or whatever so it does have that capability now here is the typical a belt sheath um, you know and it's pretty standard as far as the type that you get with most flashlights but inside here is where all the goodies lie so popping out right here right away is is your adjustable lanyard and that's pretty much like most others are here is your micro USB charging cable and the other stuff here will uh, will push out here you have something that is very unique which I've never seen before well this piece here is a key ring I think I've seen that before but this is a USB adapter or a micro USB adapter uh, see there's your standard end right there which would be the end of any of any um, USB cable you know uh, probably don't need to show you that but just like this and uh, of course the other end is for is the micro so this is how you'd use the power bank function of the flashlight by plugging that in to the micro uh, plugging that into the micro USB port on the flashlight and then of course the standard end of any charging uh, of any cable to this end and then you can charge your cell phone or whatever else you'd like or whatever other kind of device I suppose you could charge like that so that's something I've not seen before at least that I have a recollection of at the moment and they have provided a little key ring here to actually attach this to since it has the the end here for a key ring so you can attach this to your key ring to carry it around I guess only because it's a small piece and uh, at least on your key ring there's less of a chance of you losing it so that's uh, something quite different that I have seen uh, have we come to the end of the accessories no we have not okay uh, here is a spare switch cover and there's also a spare o-ring in here so this is being this is a switch cover right here and an o-ring and also the other accessory is already in the flashlight and that is a battery an 18650 feet torch 3400 
MAH rechargeable battery, which also happens to be uh, USB rechargeable. So that's already in the flashlight. So anyway, those are your accessories. And oh, where's the, um, oh, the manual. Where's the manual? The manual is right here. So that's also in the package. And uh, let me just run over a couple of things in here. Now you do have your regular outputs, of which would be low, medium, high, and turbo. And low is rated at 20 lumens, medium 130, high 460, and turbo 1800, which should give you about 40 minutes of runtime. And then you also have strobe and SOS. And everything else, of course, is talked about. I didn't mention the LED, which is a Cree XHP 35 HD, which, which puts out a pretty nice beam. And you actually have four switches on this flashlight. There's the side switch, and there's three on the tail cap. So let's, all, let's uh, run over those here as we, uh, as we move right along and show you the flashlight. So again, there you go. There's your side switch. And it is a very attractive light. It has some nice, um, some nice cooling fins right here, pretty good cooling fins. It has um, knurling here in the center. And I mean, it, it, it just has an attractive look about it. It's not, it's not uh, plain looking by any means. It looks like it's gone through some reasonably good design elements, I'm sure, as they were deciding exactly how to make it look and um, how to make it functional. And on the back here is a lockout feature. So let me show you that in two seconds after we look in down into down into the uh, there we go down into the bezel. Just want to put a little bit more light on there. Down into the bezel. So there's your LED, and it is a smooth reflector as you can see, which of course gives it uh, reasonably good uh, beam distance. And you have your beveled or um, uh, crenellated or however you want to say that the end of the bezel there to use as a weapon if you will or to uh, shatter glass or whichever you might need some sharp edges for in times of emergency so you have that as well so on the end here oh yeah and this is the tail cat of the um uh, of the pocket clip of course which is removable and already comes attached to the light when you open up the package most flashlights do have some sort of a lockout feature but this is different as you will lock but but let me make something clear though this is a lockout feature but the only buttons you're locking out are these paddle buttons right here these are tactical buttons for strobe, and these are the only buttons which you're locking out by turning this switch. And for some, I wasn't sure why, but they have it in, I suppose just for convenience, that it's in two places. This is lock, the center is unlock, and on the other side is another lock. So there's lock, unlock, and lock. But even if you're on either one of these locked portions, you can still operate the light normally. Every switch does what it's supposed to do, even while those are in the lock position, because the only thing they're, they're locking are these right here, these little paddle buttons. So by putting that in the unlock position, I can then press the paddle button and get instant strobe. If I just do that, it's momentary strobe, but if I press it and hold it, I then get constant strobe. So it's on constantly by pressing and holding either one of these buttons. A single press after that will simply turn it off. And you can also operate these while the light is turned on from any of the other switches as well, or mainly from the side switch. So uh, let's run it down here. So you have the button here on the bottom, the main tail cap button. This is for uh, turbo and this is only used for turbo so anytime you press that button you'll get turbo output and if you press it and click it it'll be locked in if you give it a light press it'll come on in momentary or tactical so that's how you use that button and that's all it's for and you can also use this button while you're already on 
from the main button. There's the main button in a different mode, and there's and there's a turbo mode from the rear switch. And then it will turn off again if I click the rear switch again. And if any of this sounds confusing, just uh, hop on over to my website where you can read my full-length written review, and it's all spelled out there individually. So these are those. So that's what the paddle buttons are for, and that's what the main switch here is for. So let's turn to the side switch while we turn off a light or two here, and of course uh, show you the beam. So from the side switch, all you do is give it one press, and you'll get an instant. You'll get instant uh, light. to, um, of course, advance the mode. You just press the button again, and uh, it looked like I was in turbo at that particular point. And as you can see with each press, it will, of course, go up or down. It'll go in one full direction and then reverse to the other direction. And uh, this battery, oh, I, that's right, I didn't show you the, uh, the actual battery that, that it comes with, because this battery is getting a little bit weak now. So actually I should put in a different battery and uh, to be able to properly show you the turbo mode. So I do apologize for that. And by the way, to turn it off at any time, you just press and hold that switch. So let's undo the cap here. And I will say one thing for this, um, is that sometimes this gets in the way while you're taking, while you're putting the cap on or off, because with regular flashlights or with other flashlights, you're kind of apt to want to grab the end part here in order to twist it off. But with this one, you have to grab up here because of course, all you're doing here is turning, is turning the lockout switch if you grab the end. So you've got to physically grab it from up there and twist it. Meanwhile, this may get turned once or twice while you're doing that. So that's the only thing about that is that I find it sometimes gets, gets in the way a little bit. So, by the way, here's the spring inside the cap. And you have some nice threading down in here as well. And here's the battery that they give you, which is the 3400 mAh fee torch battery, your 18650. It does indicate on here that it is protected. Now this battery, as I said before, is USB rechargeable and it has the port right there. So this means that you can charge this battery a couple of different ways. You can charge it inside the flashlight by using the internal uh, USB charging circuit or you can of course take this out and plug a USB into it there and charge it uh, a different way or you can put it in another charger in an external charger and charge it that way so there are actually three ways to charge this particular battery so anyway as I was saying this one's getting a little bit low so I'm going to replace it with another one which has a bit more power and there are the lights on top of here too the LED indicators which which light up when you're charging this uh, via the USB that way. The, when it's charging, it'll light up over here in red, and then it'll turn to green on this side. So anyway, um, I'm also pleased to announce that the flashlight accepts flat top batteries very well. So here's my, um, here's my 30Q battery. And as you can see, the, flat, the, the top is very flat on these, and these in some flashlights, these don't work quite as well or at all but it does work very well in this one. Battery goes down much further into the tube than the, uh, than the feed torch battery does. But uh, with the um, spring and the cap there, it does make good contact. And uh, I was also going to uh, clean these threads here, which I just noticed they look a little bit dirty because I have not cleaned them since I, since I uh, received the flashlight, so I am going to do that. And you do also have to press the uh, tail cap on a little bit here in order for it to get a grip there. All right, this battery has a little bit more power than the other one did. There's also a low battery indicator in here as well. And um, that I could demonstrate by using a weak battery that I have over here. Basically, though, that'll start to flash in red under here. When the battery voltage gets down to about 3.4, you'll get a slow red flash. 
and then if you leave it and do nothing and the voltage drops a little bit more then the red flash will increase in uh, frequency it'll start to blink faster and then eventually it should just shut off so anyway oh and the other thing there's also a, uh, a battery indicator under here too as well as the low battery voltage indicator there's a battery voltage indicator and you can see what the charge is on your battery anytime by pressing the button three times so let's do that one two three three four okay so that just told me it's four volts let me try that again one two three one two three four so that just told me the battery is four volts now if there was a if there was an additional point to that if it was like 4.1 the red indicator would come on once now I can show you that on a weaker battery or I can show you that on the feed torch battery so we can take this out put the feed torch back in and then I can do that again and show you the voltage of this battery one two three one two three one two three four five five so that showed me three point five volts on the feed torch battery three blinks in green and five blinks in red and then as soon as it's finished showing you the voltage it turns on in the lowest mode it comes on automatically in the lowest mode after it's finished uh, pounding out the uh, the voltage and then press and hold to turn it off so let me put the other battery the Samsung back in okay with that battery in there I will now proceed to the modes so let's start off in uh, and of course it has mode memory I forgot to mention of course it has mode memory so it'll always come back on in the last mode um, when the light is off you can get strobe anytime and you do that by you do that by pressing twice on the side switch one two and there's instant strobe if I press and hold it'll turn off and then if I give it a, a light press from strobe it'll return to the last regular illuminating mode I was in so let's go back down to low and here I am in low right now and uh, the beam on this light is pretty nice it um, it has a very distinctive hot spot in the center so that it does do and for this reason I feel it's a better flashlight to use outside indoors it's 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 okay indoors too but it's more in it's more suited for the uh, for the outdoors I believe or at least for long distances obviously so here we are on low and there are there are a couple of outer rings to the beam as well there's a very faint ring way on the outer edge and there's a thicker ring on the immediate edge so um, that's what you get with this particular LED but anyway now we're on low so if I press it I get to medium press it again we're in high and press it again we're in turbo and the turbo is pretty darn bright especially with the focused beam in the center it looks extremely bright at least when obviously shining on a white wall it's extremely bright in that regard so and and uh, take note there's no moonlight on this it's just low medium high turbo so it does not have a moonlight low is about 20 lumens so it does not go down to like a one lumen with a moonlight I almost wish it did but anyway uh, so those are the regular modes now if I press it from here again it'll start going down so it'll go down and then it will go back up and that's how you uh, change the modes like that and as I already showed you if you double click from here you get the um, you get strobe and then um, and the way to get SOS is to double click from strobe so if I'm if it's in the off position and then I double click like that to go to strobe if I double click again it will turn on SOS and SOS blinks at a lower output than strobe does SOS actually blinks at the intensity of high and 
tur and uh, strobe blinks at the intensity of turbo. So this is getting a little bit annoying, so I'm going to press once, and then that will take me back to the last regular mode I was on. So basically that is how you operate the flashlight. And um, I think I mentioned before about the regular charging element, right? Um, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But if you were using the... Actually, I don't think I did. So let me press here and turn off. So obviously if you're going to use the the standard um, USB here to charge the battery in the flashlight. On the other side here, you'll pull back the flap and attach the um, USB. And of course, that other little uh, doohickey there, the um, this little guy here, the adapter, of course, you would use that in the same way to charge your phone or something just by plugging it in there and then of course the other end in here so anyway when you're charging your uh, the battery inside the flashlight put the micro usb in there and this will start flashing in green and when it's finished it'll do a solid green and it's also pretty fast too or it's it's quite uh, powerful i put a uh, a voltage line tester on it while it was charging and i got over over 1000 MA. So that's pretty darn good. I don't usually see that on most internal uh, charging flashlights. They don't usually get, they don't even, they don't ever get up to a thousand or a full one amp. I don't believe I've ever really seen that before, but this one actually exceeded that and was over one amp. So that's pretty impressive. It will assuredly drop as the uh, as the capacity or as the charge as the charge continues and the capacity rises that would surely drop oh I forgot to mention the other thing in fact one of the only things about the light or which does irritate me is it does not tail stand I wish I'd for, I wish I hadn't forgotten to mention that earlier because of all the great things that the light does that's the only thing which in my mind is a strike against it it will not tail stand for anything and the reason for that being is that the switch here on the bottom uh, simply protrudes a little bit too much. I mean, it has the, the flats here, which almost looks like it's, it intends to be able to tail stand. Usually, usually when it has these here, it will tail stand. But because the button protrudes, it simply will not. So, um, anyway, that's one thing it does not do, which I wish it did. So that's the only strike against it that I can find so far. But be that as it may, if, if uh, non-tail standing light is uh, not an issue with you, then I'm sure you'll find the, uh, the Fetorch M30R very useful indeed. This was supplied by Fetorch themselves, so if you'd like to uh, check it out, you can do so by clicking the link below. Uh, Banggood is one of the exclusive retailers of Fetorch, so if you click the, uh, the Buy It Now link, in the description below you will be taken to the Banggood page where they will sell you this at a pretty darn good price and um, you can also click that link within my written review as well but uh, anyway for the meantime check out my written review at lights and, lightsandgear.com where you will see the outdoor beam shots of this light so if you want to see what it looks like outdoors as always visit lightsandgear.com in my written review and you'll see what it can do in the outdoors side elements so check that out where where my uh, purchase link is there as well fee torch hope you've enjoyed the video any questions please let me know below and we'll see you next time with more from lights and gear hope you've enjoyed it today and uh, bye for now thanks for watching